Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio. I'm a lecturer at Cornell University, and I've noticed in the last few weeks there are a lot of new resources out there for people teaching a class with Zoom, but there aren't as many for students who might be calling into a class with Zoom from home. So what I'm going to do in this video is go over some of the key features in Zoom as a participant instead of as a host, and hopefully hit on many of the points that you'll need to use when dialing into a class as a student. I am joined today by several of my coworkers, and to keep things as realistic as possible, I'm still in sweatpants, haven't showered yet, and at some point you might hear a screaming child in the background. So when you first join a meeting, you're probably going to see something like this where you have what's called a gallery view of all the participants in the meeting, but I'd recommend ignoring that, and the first thing you want to do is check to see if you are muted. There's a button in the bottom left with the little microphone symbol, and you can click that to mute yourself. Now, you might wonder if I'm muted, how you can still hear me right now. That's because I'm using separate screen recording software called Camtasia instead of recording this through Zoom. So even though it says I'm muted here, you can still hear me in this YouTube video. Now, depending on your host's meeting settings, you might be muted automatically when you join, but it's always a good idea to check this. And in general, it's good etiquette to mute yourself when you are not talking. This will prevent background noise or dogs barking or other people talking in your house or anything from being picked up and broadcasted to the other meeting participants. The same applies to video. Again, depending on your host settings, this might be turned off automatically, but if you're a student dialing into a bunch of different classes, your teachers or professors might all have different settings. So again, it's a good idea to check. If you don't want people to see that you're still eating breakfast in your pajamas, you can turn that off and your name or a static background image will show up if you have that selected. I'm going to leave both of those on for now. And the next problem you might run into here is either you won't be able to hear whoever's talking or other people might tell you they can't see you or they can't hear you. So if you're just on a laptop with a built-in microphone and a built-in webcam, this usually isn't as much of an issue. Same if you're on a tablet or a phone, but if you are using anything with ex <coughs> excuse me, external speakers, a USB webcam, USB microphone, headset, any of that, you're going to want to hit the up arrow next to the mute button and it will give you options to select a microphone and select a speaker. So on this computer, you can see I have a different webcam and microphone plugged in. I have different speaker options. So if you're not getting sound or other people are saying they can't hear you, this is the first place you want to check to make sure you have the right audio input and output selected. If you still can't figure it out, there is this test speaker and microphone option. So this will give you a little pop up. And I don't know if you'll be able to hear that playing in the background. It will play a test ringtone. This helps you identify if the problem is on your end or say the person you're speaking to, if it's their microphone that's not working as opposed to your speakers. If the problem is on your end or say the person you're speaking to, if it's their microphone that's not working as opposed to yours. So there you see it recorded my voice and played it back to me to confirm that my microphone was working. So again, if you're having audio trouble, that's the first place you want to go. For the video, there's an option a lot of people have been having fun with lately called Choose Virtual Background. So if you don't want everybody to see how messy your house is, you can upload an image that Zoom will then automatically put behind your head to the best of its ability. There might be some small errors around your hair or ears or your hand might kind of disappear if you wave it around. But in general, it does a pretty good job so you can hide whatever's in the background. Next, we're going to go over the participants and chat window. So if you move your mouse down to the bottom of the screen, there is a participants button that will give you a list of the other people in the meeting. You can see I'm just dialed in on multiple computers here. That's why you see my name more than once. And you also have a chat window. And here you can type messages to the rest of the people in the meeting. Depending on your host's settings, you may or may not be able to send individual messages to other people. Now, this is something that might seem really tempting to use at first, but I have noticed that even for moderately sized classes, this gets overwhelming pretty quickly for the instructor. So if you have 30 students who are all talking and somebody tries to ask a question, that question just gets scrolled off the top of the screen. Oops, I forgot to turn my digital background off so you can see my hand. There we go. Again, so if that chat window is just filling up with messages and you tried to ask a question, there's a very good chance the teacher won't even see it. So a much better option, and if your teacher or professor doesn't know about this or doesn't, doesn't have it enabled yet, I'd highly recommend telling them about it, is the nonverbal feedback feature. So in the participants window, and again, you have to open the participants window to see this. So if I close that, those buttons all go away. I have a raise hand button, and if I click the raise hand icon, this little icon pops up next to my name, and the host will see that as well. So for this meeting, Mr. Moose is the host, 
he can also access the same list of participants on his screen, and he will see that I have my hand raised just like you would if you raised your hand in a real classroom. So if you have a question, that is a much more orderly way to get the teacher's attention. Depending on the audio settings, you can either then, they might call on you and you can unmute yourself manually, or the host might have it locked down, so they have to unmute you and then you can ask your question. There are a bunch of other buttons here. For example, if the teacher asks a simple yes, no question, you can click yes or no, and you'll get a little check mark or X next to your name. There are some other options that the teacher may or may not be using. Like if you think they're going too fast, you can click go slower. You could say thumbs up, thumbs down, clap, or you need a coffee break. Again, so you don't wanna just hit these buttons randomly. You wanna confirm with your instructor which ones they're actually using but that should give you a much easier way to get their attention and give feedback as opposed to trying to do it in the chat, especially for large lectures where there's hundreds of people where the chat would just be completely overwhelming. So next we'll talk about the view controls in terms of what you see in this main area. As I said, I am currently in gallery view where I see a thumbnail of each meeting participant. And, and if you're dialed into a lecture, odds are you might not want to see everybody. You're probably just going to want to see the teacher. That might not be true, for example, for a small discussion-based class, but usually for a big lecture, a lot of the students are going to have their video turned off anyway, and you just want to see the teacher's screen. So you can switch to that by clicking on speaker view. And you'll notice that now Mr. Moose is taking up most of the window here, and the other buttons are all smaller across the top. However, in speaker view, if somebody else talks, so if the microphone picks up audio on their computer, it will usually swap the screen to them here. You won't see that right now because I have all the other microphones turned off. But for example, if you weren't getting the actual instructor in the main window here, you can pin a video by right clicking on it and selecting pin video. So I have pinned Mr. Stegosaurus here. So now even if somebody else talks, he will stay in the main part of my window. You can also transition to full screen if you'd like, and in my opinion, this is one of the most confusing things for people because it moves the controls around a bit. So I have a full screen button here, and you'll notice that my video for Mr. Stegosaurus has gone full screen, but the rest of my controls sort of disappeared. My participants and chat windows went away, and now my thumbnails for the other participants are in this little floating window that I can drag around, and I can minimize that. I can set it so I only show single speaker or I can show all the thumbnails. And my control toolbar seems to have disappeared. But if you move your mouse over the video and go down to the bottom, again, I can reopen the participants tab, tab and the chat window, but now they are all these separate little floating windows that I can drag around. So unless you have two monitors, in which case I can, you can't see this because I'm only recording on one, but I can drag all of these over to my other monitor and get them out of the way so I can still see this video. Full screen mode probably isn't great if you want to have these windows open because they're going to be covering up your actual video. So I can exit full screen mode, exit full screen mode go back here. Now these windows are docked again and I have my thumbnails across the top. And again, if I wanted to unpin the Stegosaurus here, I can either right click and select unpin or click unpin video here. And now the meeting has automatically decided that Moana should be the highlighted speaker right now. But if I didn't want to see her as the main video, I could just go back and repin whoever I want to. So the final thing we'll go over here is what happens when the host is sharing their screen. Again, a lot of professors might do this when they're sharing a PowerPoint or something. So Mr. Moose is going to share a PowerPoint presentation. Let's say we were learning the alphabet today. There we go, so you can see on my screen, I now have a side-by-side -side view where I have Mr. Moose's PowerPoint on the left and a small thumbnail of Mr. Moose on the right. I can click this slider in the middle to resize those. So if I wanna make the PowerPoint as big as possible and this video as small as possible, I can do that or the other way around. You can still switch to a couple other view options here. And again, this can get a little confusing. I can go back to gallery view where I see everyone over on the right. I still have the PowerPoint on the left and I can still slide these back and forth. I can also turn this side-by-side -side view off completely. If I go up to view options and uncheck side-by-side -side mode, now I have the PowerPoint large here and all the thumbnails across the top. Now I can't resize this anymore. There's no slider bar. So this is kind of just automatically taking up the full area of the screen. I have swap squared, ah, excuse me, swap 
shared screen with video. So if you wanted to make the PowerPoint smaller and the video bigger again, you can do that. Now everyone has disappeared. And you can also go full screen. So click full screen. Now I have a large video of Mr. Moose in this tiny thumbnail of the PowerPoint I can drag around again where I can expand that to show everybody else as well. And I can still swap those. So there's this swap shared screen with video button. There's also switch to shared content up here. I believe those do the same thing. So there I've switched over to the PowerPoint. I can switch this button to swap back to the video, but now it's shown Moana. So again, this is probably the most confusing part where if the host shares their screen, it should do a good job kind of automatically taking over so the shared content is big, but I've definitely seen people get confused where they click one wrong button and then have trouble recovering the shared content. So for, for example, right now you see I can't see the PowerPoint at all. I have all the thumbnails here, but the PowerPoint isn't shown and Moana is full screen here. So to get the PowerPoint back, I need to go up to this switch to shared content button, and there it is. And again, it's kind of confusing how the buttons can appear and disappear. You can see now my exit full screen button disappeared. I had that. When I have the video mode here, I can exit full screen here. When I switch back to the shared content, that disappears. So to get out of full screen, I either need to hit escape or go up to view options and hit exit full screen. So again, I think that's the most confusing part. It's easy to get lost in the controls and not understand exactly what you're seeing. So I'm gonna run through that one more time. Mr. Moose is gonna stop the share. So I'm here in gallery mode. Mr. Moose starts sharing his screen. He goes full screen on the PowerPoint. So this should be your default, but if for some reason you click on the wrong button and get lost, remember that you have this swap shared screen with video button up here that you can switch back and forth. If you're in full screen mode, then you also still have that swap shared screen with video button here. And if your exit full screen mode button disappears, you can hit escape or go into view options where you can either exit full screen, exit full screen or switch to side by side mode where you can drag and determine how large these are. So hopefully you found that helpful. This could alleviate a little bit of the stress for parents and students suddenly learning to use Zoom for classes from home. If you have a question, please leave it in the comments and I will try to get back to you. Thanks.